All right, guys, today uh, we have a Buick Grand National Turbo that has come in. Um, one that I rebuilt. It is uh, leaking a little bit of oil out of it, according to the owner. So we're going to take it apart and see what we find. Y'all guys, bear with me as we get this going. Stock turbos... Um, on a car of any age, you know, that we rebuild, you know, there's always a chance that since it is a rebuilt item that, you know, you can have some problems with it. This one has a brand new bearing housing in it, um, as well as a, uh, brand new compressor wheel. And of course, all of the center section, um, is new. So while leaking is not necessarily unheard of, it's, it's pretty rare. We're going to get to the bottom of this guy for him really quickly and see. I haven't really looked at it much before this video was started, so y'all guys are going to see everything that I do in real time. One of my biggest scares with Buicks is always the oiling system. You know, these engines are old. They were notoriously not a very clean engine to, uh, they weren't turbo friendly from day one. Um, the Buick V6 has probably the worst oiling system of any mass-produced engine. I'm not going to say in history, because that's pretty... <laughs> talking pretty much down on an engine that I actually, you know, kind of like a little bit. But there is all kinds of room for error in the Buick. And unfortunately, in today's world, we also have a lot of engine rebuilders and, you know, practices that aren't necessarily acceptable for the Buick, I guess, is the way I'll say it. Don't want to use the word non-professional because a lot of shops are very professional about rebuilding stuff and they're capable of handling things. But if you don't know the quirks of the Buick in and out, you can get yourself into some trouble sometimes. I don't know the history on this engine, you know, if it's rebuilt or, you know, an old one or has been running fine, but The turbo will always tell because the Buick doesn't do a great job of filtering the engine oil before the uh, turbocharger, so usually if there's going to be an issue, we'll see it pretty quick. Alright, so definitely got some oil present. Got some bearing play present. Let's feel the thrust. No thrust motion, but definitely has some radial motion in it. And sometimes these videos will find mistakes that, that we made, and that's why I make these videos, so I can learn from them. You know, we wouldn't be very good human beings if we didn't learn from our mistakes. No signs of contact between the wheel and the housing anywhere. No oil on the compressor side, so that's always good. Go flip y'all around over here to the vise. Adjust this guy. Excuse my dirty workshop. To say we're busy right now is definitely an understatement. I am very grateful for the work we have to do. But we do have a lot of it going on right now. These threads are standard uh, right hand, so I always put a little Loctite on them to help keep everything uh, happy, just in case there's a small engine backfire or something that makes it cough or stumble. It doesn't want to spit the shaft nut off. Garrett never Loctited them, but they used a, a nut that had a lot more thread engagement than the aftermarket nuts that we are provided with now. The nut is what we call a heavy nut, so a lot more thread engagement always helps keep things tight. All right, so let's see what we got here.
Seal rings intact. Turbine shaft looks uh has some very light tracking scoring, but nothing major. But we definitely have a ton of oil present in the uh, bearing housing back here. Looking at where the seal ring seals, got, let's see, probably not gonna be able to zoom in on here. Got one little area right here that the seal ring doesn't look like it's making good contact with the uh, with the bearing housing, but I've got a very pronounced seal ring witness mark everywhere else in there. Let me see if I can get it around. It's probably not going to translate very well on the camera, but you can definitely see in this area right here the seal ring wasn't making contact very well. Now I always install my piston ring with the in gap at the oil feed position so that bad position was basically at five o'clock so that would be right here and i slid that straight out without turning it so i definitely got some carbon present right here that's not necessarily consistent with the rest of the appearance of the uh, seal ring so could be a problem with the bearing housing I'd like to tell you we quality control every single one of these, but at some point in time, we have to build turbos, and journal bearings are absolutely mint. And the extra shaft motion could be just from, you know, the uh, oil being thin from being run. You know, it's not necessarily, it wasn't very scientific of me to say it had some shaft play to it. It had a, had some wiggle. So far, no signs of contaminant anywhere. I do have a fixture for testing the bypass amount of air that comes out of a out of a bearing housing or in the seal structure. I don't usually test carbon seal turbos because the carbon seal on the front side needs a little bit of a break-in procedure in order to seal itself upright. So to give you a false reading on our testing bench. It'll say it's leaking a lot worse than it actually will once it's running. So I'm not using that as an excuse, but Garrett T3s are generally not a uh, not a problematic turbo that we have issues with oil consumption. So probably going to say this one most likely has a machining defect in the seal, the concentricity of the seal bore in relation to, uh, you know, I'm not gonna throw the bearing housing under the bus, the, the piston ring could also not be concentric, concentric. We buy these uh, seal rings from a US supplier that's been building them for basically every turbo manufacturer since the dawn of time. Very few problems out of them. And they're very good if they have an issue that they will send us a service bulletin that they've had some issues. Haven't got one in about, about two years. And the last thing they had an issue with was actually to do with a uh, completely non-related item to any turbos that we that we buy. And there are parts that we buy turbo support from them. So this is your carbon seal. As you can see, it is a face seal that has to basically take seat to this collar. 
It is um, it's all intact here. Everything's fine. You can see genuine Garrett thrust bearing assembly. Got some little small scratches on it, but nothing nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, it's a it's an engine. It's going to have some small contaminant. Let's look at the front journal bearing. Again, no signs of any contaminant or anything. So with this, I'm going to say it's either the bearing housing or the uh, the seal ring that was the culprit. So we'll go ahead and just put a brand new bearing housing and a brand new seal ring in for this customer and reassemble his turbo. And uh, since that carbon seal has been run, um, I will actually do a little test on it and see how, how everything stacks up. And all the rest of it looks really good. And so I think we just had an issue with uh, possibly the seal ring or maybe the bearing housing. It's rare, but you know, we'll get this guy warrantied and taken care of. Guys, I appreciate y'all watching this. If you like content um, such as this, please comment and uh, make sure to hit that like button. I'm trying to do more professional content for this page um it definitely takes a lot of time to do it and y'all support uh you know with the likes and the comments and obviously a subscription if you want to it does help you know it's uh makes it all worth something for us in the long run but, uh, there you go inside of a buick 8687 buick grand national turbo that we had redone that had a little bit of oil leak issue that's the spring in the spring plate that puts pressure on that carbon seal assembly. Guys, thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day.